Hey there, welcome to the channel. Today we are talking about the wonders of human eye and ear. The human eye, a marvel of biological engineering, is designed to transmit and translate light into images. It's a sophisticated system that works a lot like a high-tech camera, but it's so much more than that. Let's start with the cornea, the eye's outermost layer. It's the clear front surface of the eye that acts like a camera lens, focusing incoming light. Next we have the pupil, a black circular opening in the center of the iris, the colored part of the eye. It's like the aperture of a camera, adjusting in size to control the amount of light that enters the eye. Beyond the pupil is the lens, a transparent structure that changes shape to focus light onto the retina, much like the lens of a camera focuses light onto the film. This process of bending light to focus on the retina is known as refraction. And then, there's the retina, the innermost layer of the eye. It's like the film in a camera. It's a light-sensitive tissue lining the back of the eye, where images are formed. The retina is composed of photoreceptor cells called rods and cones. Rods help us see in low light, while cones are responsible for color and clear, sharp vision. The images formed by the retina are then sent to the brain via the optic nerve. The brain interprets these signals and translates them into the pictures we see. But that's not all. There are other parts like the iris, which controls the amount of light entering the eye, and the aqueous and vitreous humor, the fluids that fill the eye and help maintain its shape. The complexity and precision of the human eye are truly remarkable. Each part plays a crucial role, working in harmony to bring the world into focus. So that's a brief overview of how our eyes work. But what about when we use both eyes together? Ever tried to catch a ball with one eye closed? It's a lot harder, right? That's because of something called binocular vision. Binocular vision is the magic that happens when both your eyes team up to give you one clear, unified image of the world around you. This collaboration between your eyes does wonders for depth perception. It allows you to accurately judge distances and helps in tasks like threading a needle or pouring a cup of tea. But that's not all. Binocular vision also gives us a wider field of view. Imagine watching a movie on a big screen versus a small TV. That's the difference binocular vision makes. It expands our visual field giving us a panoramic view of our surroundings. So whether you're enjoying a scenic landscape or keeping an eye on a moving target, it's your binocular vision that's doing the heavy lifting. So binocular vision gives us a better understanding of our environment. But what happens when our eyes need to adjust? Our eyes aren't just static cameras, they constantly adjust to help us see clearly. Now let's delve into the fascinating world of eye adjustments. We'll explore two key mechanisms, accommodation and the pupillary mechanism. Accommodation is like your eye's autofocus system. When you shift your gaze from something far away to something close, like from a mountain range to a map in your hands, your eye needs to refocus. And that's where accommodation comes in. The lens of your eye changes shape thanks to the tiny ciliary muscles around it. When these muscles tighten, the lens becomes thicker, allowing you to focus on close objects. When they relax, the lens flattens, letting you focus on distant objects. It's a remarkable process that happens in the blink of an eye, quite literally. Now let's talk about the pupillary mechanism. Have you ever noticed how your pupils become smaller in bright light and larger in the dark? That's the pupillary mechanism at work. The size of your pupils is controlled by two sets of muscles, the sphincter pupillae and the dilator pupillae. In bright light, the sphincter pupillae contract, making the pupils smaller and reducing the amount of light that enters the eye. In dim light, the dilator pupillae contract, widening the pupils and allowing more light to enter. This helps protect your eyes from potential damage and ensures optimal vision. Just imagine if our eyes didn't have these capabilities. If the lens couldn't change shape, we'd struggle to focus on objects at different distances. If the pupils couldn't adjust their size, we'd either be blinded by too much light or stumbling in the dark. So there you have it. Our eyes are constantly working, using accommodation and the pupillary mechanism to adjust and adapt to different conditions. They're not just passive observers, but active participants in our interaction with the world. 
These adjustments help us see clearly in all conditions. But sometimes things can go wrong. We'll explore that in the next scene. Stay tuned. Not everyone sees the world the same way. Some people have visual defects that affect their sight. Visual defects are more common than you may think, and they come in many forms. First, let's talk about short-sightedness, also known as myopia. This happens when the eye is too long or the cornea is too curved, causing light to focus in front of the retina instead of on it. The result? Clear vision up close but blurry in the distance. Glasses, contact lenses, or even laser surgery can correct this. On the flip side, we have long-sightedness or hyperopia. Here the eye is too short or the cornea is not curved enough, causing light to focus behind the retina. So far-off objects are clear, but up-close ones appear blurry. Again, corrective lenses or surgery can help. Next is astigmatism, where the cornea or lens is irregularly shaped, causing light to focus unevenly on the retina. This results in distorted or blurred vision at any distance. Corrective lenses or refractive surgery can rectify it. Lastly, we have cataracts, which occur when the eye's natural lens becomes cloudy, often due to aging. This can cause blurry vision, difficulty with glare, and faded colors. Treatment? A common surgical procedure to replace the cloudy lens with an artificial one. While these visual defects can be challenging, advancements in medicine provide effective treatments. Now let's switch gears and explore how our ears work. Our ears do more than just hear. They help us balance and interpret the world around us. Imagine your ear as a grand concert hall with three main sections, the outer ear, the middle ear, and the inner ear. Each section plays a unique role in capturing, amplifying, and interpreting sound. The outer ear, comprised of the pinna and the ear canal, is like the grand entrance to our concert hall. It's the first stop for sound waves. The pinna catches the sound waves and funnels them down the ear canal to the eardrum. The middle ear, which includes the eardrum and three tiny bones known as the ossicles, acts as the main auditorium. When sound waves hit the eardrum, it vibrates, causing the ossicles to move. This movement amplifies the sound waves and sends them into the inner ear. The inner ear, or our VIP section, houses the cochlea and the vestibular system. The cochlea, filled with fluid and tiny hair cells, converts the amplified sound waves into electrical signals that our brain can interpret. Meanwhile, the vestibular system, equipped with three semicircular canals and two structures called the utricle and saccule, manages our sense of balance. It detects head movements and gravity, sending signals to our brain about our body's position. But the ear's job doesn't stop with hearing and balance. It also helps us understand the direction of sounds and even assists in speech. It's like an all-in-one device, finely tuned to help us navigate our daily lives. However, our ears are not just complex, they're delicate. They're constantly exposed to environmental factors, loud noises, and infections that can harm their intricate structures. And when something goes wrong, it can affect our ability to hear, our balance, and how we interact with the world. Our ears play a crucial role in how we interact with our environment. But just like our eyes, they can also experience problems. Hearing loss can have a profound impact on a person's life, but what causes it and how can we treat it? Let's delve into this. One common cause of hearing loss is a middle ear infection. This occurs when bacteria or viruses cause inflammation in the air-filled space behind the eardrum. This can lead to pain, fever, and, if left untreated, can cause temporary or even permanent hearing loss. The good news is, middle ear infections are often treatable. A common method is the use of grommets, tiny tubes inserted into the eardrum that allow air to enter the middle ear, reducing pressure and helping to drain any fluid buildup. Another common cause of hearing loss is deafness, which can range from mild to profound and can be present from birth or acquired later in life. There are many potential causes of deafness, including genetic factors, age, exposure to loud noises, and certain illnesses. Fortunately, there are also treatments available. Hearing aids, for example, amplify sounds, making them louder and easier to hear. Cochlear implants, on the other hand, bypass damaged parts of the ear and directly stimulate the auditory nerve, allowing the brain to perceive sounds. 
From catching a ball to enjoying a symphony, our eyes and ears are essential to our experience of the world. They are complex, delicate, but incredibly capable organs. Thanks for joining our journey through the wonders of human eye and ear. For more wonders of life, hit subscribe like and stay tuned. Keep learning, keep exploring.